Welcome to The Leader's Mindset, where we have illuminating conversations with leaders, entrepreneurs, and community builders who are having an impact in the world around them and how they're building the teams and being the leaders they need to be to make that impact a reality. Today I'm here with Sarah Ramthan. She's the founder of Real Prep Meal Prep. She's been a personal trainer, a fitness competitor, and now an entrepreneur. Welcome and thank you for being here, Sarah. Thank you. So let's get into it. Tell us about Real Prep Meal Prep. What were you doing before you started Real Prep Meal Prep? How did it start? What was the, what was the catalyst? What really got you started doing it? Before I started the company, I was doing personal training and nutrition coaching for four years at Snap Fitness in Boulder City. And when COVID shut down the gyms, I had tried to rebuild my clientele when they opened it back and then they shut us down again. So during that time, I was still training a few clients uh, at the park or at home, and I needed to figure out a way to make more income. So I started feeding my clientele. And it was really just a plan to hold me over through the time that I couldn't work in the gym. And I started training them, and they got very passionate into their results. They Real quickly, they started getting quick results faster than when I was training them in the gym and they were cooking their own meals that I was assigning to them. So my clients started telling me that I should start selling them to other people. So they suggested to put them on social media. Next thing I knew I was selling to Henderson and Vegas too and I'm from Boulder City so I, I just kind of ventured out further and further. After that, um, uh, from October, to January, I decided to legalize the business. And I got all the permits, I got all of the, the paperwork done, and I put us into a commissary kitchen come February. So again, I still wasn't sure where it was gonna go, I, but I thought, well, it went well at home, and let's just give it a shot. And then from there, I really just grew. The moment that I became a real company and I started really advertising on social media, posting, talking about it, sharing my own results with my own food that I now make into meals for other people. That it, it really just happened naturally and organically. I honestly don't think that I at first had the intentions of it becoming anything other than to hold me over through COVID. Um, I, I do believe that the company has chosen me over the time. Uh, I Next thing I knew, I was selling to doctors, nutritionists, bodybuilders that are famous, Olympians, fighters, jiu-jitsu artists. It, it, like the list goes on and on. And I really wanted to create a company that had no gimmicks. That was where my passion started, where I felt that I could do something different. Being an athlete myself and eating at the companies that were provided to me, I would notice that my results would go backwards or my meals weren't always, you know, right dialed in and I would start to decline in results. So when I created the company, it was a very big passion of mine to create the real deal meal prep. Yeah, I think one of the things that's super impressive is how you grew from word of mouth through social media and now your clients span the gamut from folks who just want to eat a little better up through your athletes, which is really impressive. And then you have all these partnerships as well. Yes. And what is it that you're doing that, that attracts all of these people to you? Because when you look around on social media, when you look around, there, there's dozens if not hundreds of people doing meal prep here in the Las Vegas Valley. What makes you special? What makes it unique about what you're doing that is attracting so much attention from people who are really serious about their meals? I think that there's a few things that make me stand out, which would be one, like I said, the gimmick free, the no, the no sugar, the no gluten, no dairy, no flour. So anybody who really knows a lot about nutrition knows right away that for fitness goals or health goals, those are going to be the first things that coaches are going to cut from your diet or even doctors. So people who are educated are going to see that and know instantly, oh, I want to try that. Mm -hmm. um, then people who don't know these things, I educate them. I talk to them. I get calls all the time, and I love to take those calls. Uh, another thing that sets me apart that I notice upon watching my other competitors is that I do this with my customers. 
I constantly, I'm a normal person. I go up and down in weight. I'm a female. When I'm stressed, I want to eat. I, 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 I don't know. I'll have that movie night with my kid or my friends. And, and I just go off the rampage. And, and then the next day, I get back on. I'm right back at that treadmill, and I'm right there sharing my meals, and I confess this stuff to all of my clientele. I tell, I post it. I tell them, oh, you know, I did bad last night, so today I'm going to work harder. Today I'm going to lift heavy. Today I'm going to do that. I constantly am sharing this stuff with people, so they're not only watching or getting inspired, but sometimes they're they're learning and being educated. They constantly. I have many people who constantly comment on these things, and they're like, "Thank you so much. I'm going to get up and go to the gym now too." Um, I'll put up there, I'll be filming my cardio and I'll tell them, you know, I'm on doing my cardio. Who's with me today? And I'll get many people that are like me, 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 or I wasn't, but now I am, you know? And I've so seen, I've seen those comments. On yeah. That. So, so, I mean, I didn't really know that that was going to happen, but I just started sharing the lifestyle because I live the lifestyle myself. So I see how everybody does all these stories and all these things all day long. And I was like, maybe I should just start kind of sharing how I do this, how I did it, what I do when I mess up, what happens when I sit on the scale and I'm 10 pounds up overnight, it seems like, even though I know it probably took me two months to get that mm -hmm. 10 pounds and the multiple choices that got me there. But I admit that or when holidays are coming. I always diet down with my audience during holidays to show them that when we're expecting that 10 pound weight gain, we can actually turn it into a 10 pound weight loss. And then we can really enjoy that eating of the holiday because we worked to get there. So I do things like I set goals with people and I'm like, okay, this week I know that I'm going to Thanksgiving and I wanna eat the pie, I wanna eat the jelly, I wanna eat everything on that table. I'm going to eat it. I already know this. So for the week, of coming up to, I tell everyone, okay guys, I'm going to lower my carbs, I'm gonna keep my cardio up, and I'm going to do this. I'm gonna have that day, we're not gonna go backwards. And I share with them my weight, I post it, I tell them, and then I share with them after the cheat. Often, I drop two pounds after the holiday because I dieted going into it. So when they see that these results work, uh, a lot of them copy me. They do it with me and they'll tell me, they'll, they'll, like I said, they write me, they call me, They'll tell me, I'm going to try that, I'm going to try that, and they all get these great results. And so they kind of learn mirroring what I'm doing. And yeah, I think holidays, that makes a difference. The holidays are coming up, so follow Sarah now, <laughs> and then you will yeah. have lost weight by the end of the holidays instead of yeah. have gained weight. Yeah, yeah, you know, you can. and or, or at least we can maintain you, you know. And if we do put on a few pounds, we're going to get it right back off. And that's what I tell people. I fall off all the time. Multiple times a year I fall off. But my only trick and the best advice is I get back on. Yeah, you're, you're so open and genuine on your social media. And that translates into what you're doing with the company. Because I know that no gluten, no sugar is not just a sticker you put on your meals like some companies do. It's the truth. You, you mm -hmm. are, are very disciplined about what you put in there. And you're disciplined with your processes as well. Uh, can you tell us a little more about how you prep the meals, what, what your thought process is, how you, how you get this to serve your customers so they know exactly what they're getting? So when we, when we prepare the meals, everything is measured in my company. So all the way down to every recipe of the proteins. A uh, big thing that we do make sure that we do is we keep our fats very low. I keep all oils down. We use only organic avocado oil. And we use like a, one teaspoon per 10 pounds of meat. So this is not enough to tamper with anybody's results or fats that they're counting in a meal. My meals come as low fat as I can keep them. So same thing, my vegetables, they have no oils. My carbs, no oils, no butters, no, no dairy, any of that. Mm -hmm. So. Everything is as clean as I can get it for you and as low fat as I can get it for you. From your chicken to your sirloin, it is trimmed before cooking. So we're not cooking the fats and letting that oil get onto your meat either. Um, and not only is it trimmed before cooking, but you have these beautiful spreadsheets that you have and everything is measured, weighed, and calculated so that everything is 100% precise that if you're supposed to have four ounces in that meal, four ounces of protein in that meal, it's four ounces of the protein. Yes, yes. this is something that my company is very legit on. We weigh every meal out to the portion. If you're ordering, and we cook to, to, we cook, to cooked weight. So like 
when I'm doing the calculations the night before, I have to add shrinkage into this. There's companies out there that you order a four ounce chicken and when you get it, if you're someone who's counting everything, you might weigh that and it's gonna weigh two and a half to three ounces and you call a company and say, I thought I got the four ounces. They'll say, well, that was the, the raw weight. Well, I was trying to order four ounces cooked, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like wait a second. And so my company, I serve in cooked weight. Every protein has a different shrinkage I learned, and over the time I've had to dial those percentages in. So an easy math, chicken shrinks 50%. If I have a 100 pounds ordered, I'm cooking 150 pounds mm -hmm. to land at 100 pounds cooked so I can serve my customers their cooked weight. Tell us why it's important that if you order four ounces, you don't get less than four ounces or six ounces or whatever it is. Because yeah. I didn't know this till you and I talked in a little more detail. Why is that really important? So the reason that is very important that our measurements are spot on in my company and the passion behind it is that I myself have been through my own fitness journey. I once was 180 pounds, then I got down to one, 120. I got down 20, 50 to 60 pounds. I had right in the between. I started dieting very hard. And when I became the personal trainer and athlete and I did the nutrition coaching, I learned about calories and macro balancing and how to count everything versus my burning or my food intake. So when I am dieting personally, I'm counting everything. That four ounces of meat matters because if you cut, you know, even one to two ounces of something or you're lowering my carb or raising my carb, you're throwing my numbers off by 200 calories, potentially 150, 100. It doesn't matter. If I eat 21 meals of yours a week and you, my meals are off 100 calories, that's 2,100 calories that you have changed my meal plan for that week of total calories I need to take in, whether it's a surplus or a negative. So if it's a negative, then I am now suffering a lot more than I should be during that deficit that I planned to be in, which then can lead to the plateau of me now cheating. I got a binge, I got, I'm going crazy, I'm, I'm yelling at people, I'm, I'm frustrated, you know, the psycho comes out if you're too hungry. And that's something I teach my clientele when I start helping them diet down, is I will do two week check-ins with them until I have them where we're not at that borderline crazy. So. Tampering with someone's numbers is a huge deal, especially if they're trying to lose weight. On the other hand, if somebody's up, you know, 2,100 calories a week they weren't planning, that could be a two pound weight gain when we were supposed to go down two pounds. So, so measure your food or have Sarah do it for you. So, yeah. um, you've had a lot of success doing this in your own life. Your clients yes. have had a lot of success. What are some of your favorite success stories from your clients? <sighs> I have, I have a lot of good ones. I think my favorite success story, I had a client named Ernest, and he was my first diabetic. And I told him right away, I've never done this, but I met him at a Best Buy, and I was carrying some personal training cup, and I was getting a new phone, and, and he asked me, you know, what do you do? And I was told him I was training. He's like, I've been on a, on a mission. So over the time period that I learned to work with Ernest and to not – to mess with his sugar levels and put him in danger, but trying to lose weight. And then we lost 75 pounds safely. And he actually ended up lowering his insulin to almost 25% of what he was doing mm -hmm. before. And so I think for me, that was definitely a big experience emotionally and also confidence because I was intimidated to take him on. And I t admitted that to him right away. And then I said, you know, but he was checking his insulin all day. So we were making sure that we were safe. When I started putting muscle back on him, we started checking to make sure we weren't spiking him too high. We learned which carbs spike him more than other carbs. So we really dialed it in personally. He was one of my, I think, most emotional journeys because I, I really, he changed his entire life. And I, I still coach him today. It's been three years now. That's fantastic. Yes. It uh, it shows just how much you are in a partnership with your with your customers, even if you are preparing just preparing their meals and you're mm -hmm. not coaching them. Just how much of a partnership you have with them to make sure that they succeed. Yes, I think everybody's journey that I work with is very emotional, and they all have their own story of how they lost themselves, what happened, who died in their life, who passed away, what divorce, what. It, it's always so emotional, and I'm so passionate to help people that. I get involved in that. And so 
when my clients lose 10 pounds, that's their first goal, 10, 20, 30, we have these milestones. I'm, I'm in tears. Like I'm crying for them because I know how hard they worked for it. And they call me on the bad days. They call me when they're, when they're so hungry, Sarah, I don't think I'm gonna make it till tomorrow. Okay, let's get you a yogurt. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Calm down. You need a yogurt, <laughs> you know, like, and so going through it with them has really enlightened me. It's really softened me to, mm -hmm. to feel that passionate because I can relate to them to having my experiences and going through the 50 pound weight loss uh, that now when I'm working with especially women who are more emotional, those, the tears that they cry throughout the journey to lose that weight, it's, I can completely like sit there and be, I remember this, mm -hmm. I, I remember this and it's going to be okay. And I walk them through it. And so the bond with my clients starts to feel more like a family versus client or friend. It becomes people that I ha am out to protect or help them. And they're all an emotional journey. They all touch my heart. Yeah, we only need to you look know. at your Instagram to see that and how yeah, connected you are with them. So They inspire me so much. Yeah. So there's a lot of technical work involved, a lot of math in what yes. you do to make sure you serve your clients in this way and help them be successful. Yes. What are some of your favorite tools that you use, technical or otherwise, to get your yeah. work done? Uh, I'm a big spreadsheets nerd. I love my spreadsheets. I have spreadsheets galore, folders after folders after folders. Even like my, I have clientele that I do their strict nutrition plans. We have redial and we measure everything exactly the way their coaches have written it or their doctors and dietitians. I get those onto the spreadsheets and I calculate them from there. I work back and forth with my partnerships on spreadsheets that are on these more elite plans. Mm -hmm. Then from there, yes, I do all of the math. I transfer it from my website into a sheets folder and I calculate, send all the numbers, the meats, the flavors, the proteins, the carbs, the vegetables, and I separate them all. I organize them all into sizes and the calculations. That is probably the hardest part of the computer work. Um, that took me a long time to learn. And even some weeks I'm still, I still need a little assistance every once in a while if I get stumped. But now I finally, going closer to two years into this, I now hired a programmer about six months ago and he's been building me a program where now it's transferring over and it's doing the reorganizing for me where before I did that manually, I dragged everything and moved it because of course the website doesn't just send it in order for you. It comes mm -hmm. in the random order that it was ordered in. So I have to reorganize it. So that's been a big time saver. I was spending my order window closes Saturday night at 8 p.m. and I would be on the computer till midnight or 1 a.m. calculating. We've, we've had some chats yes. that late. When and that was working. normal for a year and a half. And then I, yeah, it was it was really crazy. And so now it's gotten down to where it's about an hour of time with the system built. And, and I want to emphasize when she talks about doing all this math, we're not talking about doing this for like 10 meals. <laughs> you're you're going out and you're you're building these spreadsheets because you're going out and you're you're buying hundreds of pounds of food yes. every Sunday, mm -hmm. right? You, you, you need to know exactly how much you need to get. Yes, I do. To, I, we cook serve. fresh weekly. Yeah, it's so all fresh. So I buy product fresh every single week based upon my orders. So that's part of why I have the order window closing yeah. so I can calculate it and know what I need to purchase. There's, there's not a lot of margin for error here. Otherwise, no. you're going you're to have to throw things the out. The moment that there's an error, now that further in, I now have backup in the freezer. I've portioned out pounds of each protein. So if we have a shortage, boom, we can pull from the freezer. Before it turned into, got to go, I'm running to the store, I'm going to go get it, I'll be back. And then, you know, real quickly we realized, okay, well, that takes an hour. And so more efficiently, now I have backup proteins of everything on stock all the time. And now you're in a big commercial kitchen too. You're mm -hmm. not just doing this out of Boulder City anymore. Correct. I'm now in my second commercial kitchen. I started off at Slice Commissary on Pecos in Henderson. And that was really great. I loved it. But it was the start of my company where I didn't own everything yet. So I needed to rent. I needed to even rent pots and pans. And that was a commissary that provided everything you would need, enough mm -hmm. sheet pans, everything. And you can rent it all. So I started there. It was a smaller kitchen. It was within that first year that I saw we were going to outgrow the size of the kitchen already. And we were running into losing room in the freezer or fridge with the other companies that were working there also. So I ended up moving us over to Vita Kitchens on Cheyenne, which is an old grocery store, an old Albertsons. So it's huge. 
and there's multiple and many kitchens in there and the walk-in freezers are the size of a room or bigger and you can there's plenty of growth space there's there's yes the, there's there's good amount i've seen um, i do have other companies in there two other meal prep companies are in there too and we're all friends we're all family we all give advice we talk like it, it's so cool to be that's part of like it's very inspirational to be around them because they've been there uh, you know they're four they're six to eight years into their companies and one of them sells anywhere from 12 to 1500 meals a week the other one sells anywhere from eight to a thousand so it, I can see how much potential there is for me in there, and I can even see that even if I get to fifteen hundred, I'm still in a home base. Yeah, that's great to hear because that's not something you and I talk about. One of the things we talk a lot about on this show is founders mentoring founders. So it's great that you found people in your same industry, mm -hmm. and there's enough room for everybody, even in the same kitchen, to to be successful. That you're you're all helping each other out. Yes, we do, and we actually send people referrals. We send each other referrals too because our companies have different niches. So like mine is more. So on the health fitness side and then some theirs are more one of them is still fitness and then the other one is more lifestyle mm -hmm. and just kind of learning healthier but still fun meals still some dairy there's still some flour and so we all have different audiences so if I get the call and it makes more sense to send them that way I do and then when they get the calls for fitness competitors or doctors or people on specific plans they call me the customers call me and they say I called this person and they sent me to you so it, it's almost it's every few weeks that I get a call that one of those companies sent someone to me and then I try to return the favor too. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So what else is different about running this business than what you've, the kind of work you've done in the past? What's different about it? Well, before the personal training, all of that, I started off, um, I did 10 years of serving in food restaurants and I was management. So I, I started running, um, I ran a restaurant called Pit Stop in Boulder City, mm -hmm. and I worked there for 10 years. Uh, that employer, Bob, had taught me so many things that I'm using in my company today. He put me in charge of the Cisco orders. He taught me how to do the banking. He taught me how to count my inventory, how to load it, how to pre-plan, how to order extra in case they're out next week, things like that. I, I feel like I use all of that. So it's very different now in the sense that I'm doing my own business and it, I really took all those years of restaurant experience with my nutrition coaching and my diet coaching or um, personal training and I put it all together to create real prep meal prep. So I guess the main difference is that instead of somebody else in charge, I'm now in charge and calling the shots and the ideas are mine. And when my employees have ideas too, I love to talk about them and implement them too. We try all kinds of things all the time and all the time we're improving our techniques. That's great. It sounds like you had a really great mentor in the restaurant business who helped you and now you're mentoring your team yes. to, to be successful as well. So tell us about your team. Who's on your team? Where did you find them? Okay, so I've gone through, um, I now have been probably up to about 10 employees over this time, which I generally now have five at all times. And then I have my call-in employees. I started off with a, my first employee was the one that I started off at home with. And he was an old friend from junior high. I've always had a, a friendship with him over the years because I was adopted and he was an orphan in St. Jude's as a child. And so when he went back, his mother got custody of him back. I kept in contact with him all these years. Well, when I started like posting, you know, does anyone want to come help me? He raised his hand. And so he was a childhood friend of mine that I've kind of mentored over years now, especially later on in life that we've been adults. Um, but he started the company with me, came in, worked for me. You know, we, we, we worked so hard between the two of us doing it all. And he moved into the kitchen with me too, and then from there, I, my best friend, her daughter needed a job, So, and her daughter had started to go on the wrong path, and so I said, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give her a shot. I've been on the wrong path before, and I've had employers give me chances, and I'm, I'm, let, let's take her. Let's see if we can turn her direction. So I took her under my wing. She's now been my longest term employee, and she's my be one of my best employees, and she has had a full turnaround. Um, which that's been an emotional journey too, because I've watched her go from where we started to where she is now, and I'm very proud of her. Um, 
then from there, another one was school connections. I do, um, I did get some applications turned in from social media, Facebook. So one of my chefs is a Facebook hire and he's been, he's a great employee too. And basically from that, it's basically mostly been people I know or word of mouth. And then now, yes, I, I also hired um, two other guys off of Facebook. My, one of my drivers now contacted me off of Instagram as I post on there that I'm looking mm -hmm. for employees. So now my company is growing to where it's not just close people I know anymore. It's now strangers and people I have to build trust with my company, trust with coming in and carrying my product and representing. So how been is a that? How has that made you up your game as a leader to start working with folks that you don't already have a personal relationship with? Well, when I worked at the restaurant, like I said, for the management, uh, before I became a manager there, I was, uh, I got turned into, he mo nominated me to be the restaurant trainer. So when I left Pit Stop, I had trained every employee on that floor by the end of my 10 years. So I was already used to taking a stranger and teaching them the way of how it's done here, this and that, learning to push them, motivate them, turn it into a game, make it fun. You know, a lot of when I'm cooking, I feel kind of like I'm in a video game. So I do everything in a certain order. I've got all my pans lined up. Mm -hmm. I'm hitting this one. I read my recipes, hit them all one at once. And I kind of, if you can kind of program yourself into like this groove, then you just, you start to get a good feel for things. So. Um, it's, it's made me grow working with new people, I guess, because I'm, I'm a very shy person too. So I kind of have to, it, it's definitely been something I have to practice and work on. So, but I've done well and I did earn the position at that job and gave me the confidence to be able to do it with my own business. It, it sounds like you're doing great. It sounds like your team is doing great. It sounds like you're helping them grow in the right direction to help your company grow in the right direction. So, mm -hmm. so, all right, let's play a game. Okay. All right. <laughs> this game is called This or That. Okay. Okay. I'm going to ask you a series of questions. I'm going to give you a this or a that. When you hear the question, just answer with whatever comes in. What's the first thing that comes into your mind? So it could be this or that or whatever comes into your mind. We're, we're not too formal about it here, okay? This or that. This okay. or that. Okay. You ready? Sure. All right. <laughs> Sarah Ramthan, This or That, Your Time Begins now digital or analog digital dogs or cats dogs yankees or red Sox? yankees incorrect <laughs> sweet or spicy not gonna lie sweet okay good to know mm-hmm <laughs> Halloween or Thanksgiving? I love to dress up. Halloween. Okay. I've also won the contest three times in a row. No, well, we're gonna have to get, <laughs> we're gonna have to get some of those pictures for yeah. uh, for B roll for this. Yes. East Coast or West Coast? West. Sunrise or sunset? Sunset. Downtown or the Strip? The Strip. Dress up or casual? Dress up. Instagram or TikTok? Instagram. Yeah, I thought you were going to say that. Yeah, I tried TikTok, but I just can't get the groove. That's okay. <laughs> There'll be something new in another year. So. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll all get caught up with that. All right. You're so driven. You're so focused to succeed and serve your clients, but you weren't always that way. You've been through a transformation yourself. What, what, what can you tell us about that transformation and how you got to where you are today? So my transformation started about six to seven years ago, and I, I weighed about 180 pounds, and I knew that I was getting thick, and I was my thickest, and um, I was really wanting to lose 10 pounds because I had tried to lose pound weight before, and I just failed within, like, the first week. And... And so I was my, surrounded by my sister and one of my friends at the time, and they were eating vegan. And so they kept talking to me about eating plant food and this and that. And so 
I was like, you know, maybe I'll, I'll try like just a little bit. And at the time of my life, I didn't eat any vegetables at all. I was a very picky eater. I was very picky with textures. I didn't like skins on things. I was like, I was the typical little kid that was like not going to touch that um, just because it looked funny. Not because it tasted bad, but mm -hmm. because I was, I had like a phobia about foods and textures. And so I was weird about vegetables. Um, so I started practicing some of that plant life and my friend was blending his, making blends and my sister too. So I was like, I could, I could drink that. I don't want really want to eat it, but I found that I could drink it. So I started off in little stages of just trying to drink my vegetables and start to eat, eat better. Then I started, I bought this garage sale bike. My son, I think at the time was about four and he was just learning how to ride a bike. So I was like, maybe I'll just buy a garage sale bike and ride around town. So I did, I got like this $60 bike up the street and, and um, I started riding everywhere with him. And next thing I knew I was like super motivated and I lost that 10 pounds. And then I was like, maybe I'll try to lose another 10 and uh, maybe I'll try to lose another 10. And I got all the way up to between the 50 and 60 mark. And then in that first year of my journey, I went from riding the bike and I have a swimming background from high school and I swam for 15 years for the Boulder City team. And so I was like, oh, well, maybe I'll start swimming again. And so I'm teaching my son swimming. I'm putting him in swimming lessons. So now mom's swimming with Drayden, and I'm also cycling with him too. And from there, like I said, I was serving tables at that mm -hmm. time. So I had customers that would come right in on their crazy bikes, those skinny wheel tire ones. And you're like, what are these weirdos doing in those outfits? You know, you're like watching them. You're like, what is, look at these guys. And everybody's giggling at them. And they know that they look silly. They all know. And, and they started talking to me, you know, what are you doing? Because they started to know that they saw that they saw from in that six months, I lost that 60 pounds. They were like, what the heck is, the? they started asking, what am I doing? I'm riding this garage sale bike, blah, blah. And then. They were like, we'll rent you a bike, let's go on a ride. Okay, I went on this ride, and I didn't know on these skinny tires, I was so scared, and I did one ride with them, and I got hooked. Mm -hmm. Next thing I knew, I was in the bike shop getting my own road bike, and then I was buying Drayden a road bike too. You know, 10 miles turned into 20 miles, turned into 30 miles. My son, at age six, was riding his bike for 30 miles with no brakes. Uh, at that point, those that new community of friends that I had that were motivational people to me that were encouraging the fitness. They were like, Sarah, you're cycling, you're swimming, you got one more thing to do and that's running and you should do a triathlon to finish out your one year bang. And I'm like, you guys, first off, let me tell you, I've had surgery on both Achilles tendons. I don't run, I don't. Like from here to that wall is way too far. It's gonna hurt. So, but the idea got planted and I'm kind of one of those people, like if you, if you turn the trigger on, I'm gonna try. So I started running. I literally had to run street light to street light and I would have to stop because I would be in pain in my ankles, crying sometimes because it was emotional and I just wanted to do one mile and I could not get my body to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, I just kept trying street light to street light to street light. And the next thing I knew I was running one mile. Then I started joining the kids team at my son's elementary school where they do a running program before school with the children. They earn tokens every time they do a lap. It's a stamp thing. And then when they get 100, then when they get whatever, however many miles, they earn tokens. So it was the school that I grew up in. And with my surgery, I actually had doctor's notes that excluded me from running in PE. So I actually had memories of being the timer for the mile runs. And so it was very emotional for me as an adult mm -hmm. to be back on that field. Now I'm trying to run and I'm doing it. And then I built up to one mile, two miles, five miles. I did my first 10 mile run once. And then, so I trained about three months that I had that notice for that triathlon that my group threw me in. And I trained so hard and I got my miles up, my speed up. And I did that first race and it was the, the anniversary of my one year of my fitness journey. And I landed third place on the podium. <laughs> and I still, I still have those feelings of like, I can't believe that happened. And uh, that was really, that was kind of the moment that I, I guess I was changed inside to realize that I had a knack for this. I had, it was the time that was when I changed my career path, my direction. I saw how many people I was inspiring. People were writing me for personal training now. They, 
that was like, that was encouraged too by the people that were surrounded by me, watched me do my journey and their belief in me that I could inspire other people. And so t finishing that year that way was definitely in that moment that, that, that feeling of attention, of that, that pride. And um, that was the moment, I guess, I, my passion turned where I was like, I want to help people. And I want to train people. I want to teach people how to transform themselves too. And you know that it, I I just went that direction. I didn't. There wasn't a plan. There wasn't a. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to become a trainer. I'm going to do this. It was. I was just along for the ride. But I just kept doing the work. Mm. One step at a time. Yeah. For what sounds like an amazing year, and I think uh, I think the community here is better off for you having done that. Thank you. So. All right. Where do you want to take real prep meal prep? What's the goal with your company? Is there one? So there is many goals. Some of them are just short term, getting to certain meal counts. You know, uh, r right now, you know, hitting those 500s is we've been doing great. Now, you know, like I said, knowing the potential of the companies that are beside me and cheering me too. They're at 800, 1,000, 1,500, so I can see that if they can do it, I can do it too. And I just have to continue to find the people that are in, in need what I have. And they, so the goal for my company really is to help as many people as I can. And one of, by that is not just athletes, not just my awesome Olympians and my pro fighters and these guys that are super cool. It's the heart behind the company, the made with love quote for my company, is the passion to help people with their life journeys and struggles, whether it be addictions or food addictions or you know drugs or being overweight, diabetes, all of the health. I have, I have customers with celiac disease, people with allergies that are, I mean, list of endless allergies. And so my company, being that we accommodate all of those needs, I can help those people. They, I constantly get calls of people calling me that you know they have these health issues. My mom, my grandma, my, it could be them, or they're calling for someone else to ask about my food. And so that's the passion behind it, is being able to help those people. And I've had people like almost in tears telling me, you know, I, I can't find anywhere that I can eat safely, and I have these restrictions. I can't eat anywhere. And I'm like, you can eat here. You can. And they know immediately right away when they start digesting my food that there's no gimmicks because they're not going to get the reactions. They're not going to get inflammation. Their, their pain will start to lower as their inflammation lowers from my food. Their, um, their cholesterol, I had one guy call me within a couple of months. He was down 300 on his cholesterol, um, and he was only eating two meals a day, you know, and five times a week, not seven days a week. So... Even the small changes have created large changes internally for some of my clients. And like um, now I have more multiple diabetics and they, you know, we accommodate to their needs. They're low carbs, they're vegetables only, or half the carb that comes with my meal. We'll even do that if they, you know, we will adjust each meal to customize it for each person and their needs, whether it's a fitness goal or a diet goal or a health goal or a doctor's warning goal. Those are my most emotional. Yeah, I, I've certainly seen you've had amazing results with athletes and competitors and that kind of thing. But I think the folks you're talking about are really the impact you've had with your clients and in the community is is the results you, you're having people with just improving their health. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, I I did start with the fitness community because that's what I knew and that's what I was doing, and those were the connections I had. As I got further in, I started working with firefighters and policemen, and then next thing I knew, they were sending me doctors. And I, and then I now I have four doctors on board that I cook for them, their offices, and their clients. And then I have nutritionists that are writing the meal plans for these people for their health needs or fitness goals. And I cook, like I said, they send them to me on spreadsheets, and I do all the math, mm -hmm. and I create their meal plans to exactly what that nutritionist wrote or that doctor has written. So in a sense, when I'm working with them, this is the moment where food becomes medicine. This is where the moment where we're really helping somebody and we're changing someone's life. I have a family of three diabetics, mom, dad, and daughter. And they've been ordering for me now for over a year. And they order 
um, 40 meals a week for the three of them. And they, they order weekly. They call me, they're like, I can't believe how much results we've had. We're actually losing weight where we all feel better. None of us are getting spikes in our, you know, they, it, it's made it where they can live again. And they don't understand how to cook their food that way or how to do it, or they don't have the patience or the time. I think it's a combination of all for that family, but it, it can be life-changing for these guys is who need the help or don't have the time, but they have dietary needs and that they have to follow or they're in trouble, you know, not in trouble with anybody, but in trouble internally. And some of these guys they're facing, you know, being told that, you know, they've got, if they don't stop this way of living, that they're going to go downhill real quickly. And they, some, I have customers that call me in such fear. And then it's, it's really cool. Cause it's, it's weeks when they call me telling me that they're feeling better. It's two two weeks, sometimes the first week they call me yeah. already ecstatic that they I, can't believe it. I think the results speak for themselves yes. with everyone who your clients from, you know, the competitors all the way right to the folks uh, with the health issues that, that really need you and you're delivering for them right away. Yes. So who is someone you admire as a leader or in business? Hmm. I look up to a lot of people. I have a lot of mentors now. That is something that I seek in friendships and in business partners. Um, I, have a, I have a list, so I, I don't know if I want to say one name because then I'm leaving out the other 10, but um, I do feel there is one that really stands out to me, and his name is Dana, and he is Jay Cutler's manager. Mm -hmm. And Jay Cutler is a huge phenomenon in the Olympia and has a great big name. And if you know anything about the industry, everybody knows who Jay Cutler is. And I even know who Jay Cutler yeah. is. Yeah. So. And so I got a hold of Dana after I did Jay's first show. And I told him all about my products. And since then, he's kind of been a mentor for me. If I have a business struggle, I talk to him about it. He gives me ideas. He tells me about his adventures. Um, same thing when I have, you know, Iris Kyle from the powerhouse, she's another 10 times Olympia and best in the world. And she gives me business advice of what she's learned over the years, being a woman in business. And I have multiple, I, I, I don't even know where to start with the list of people that have supported me and pushed me and given me the ideas of who to pursue and what connections. And when somebody gets on board with me, they see my enthusiasm, they feel it too. They try the food, they get the results. And then that person becomes a believer and they start, they send me to who they know or this and that. And, you know, I, I, I definitely have a lot of good people in my court now. And, you know, as, like you mentioned about the partnerships, I'm up to 21 partnerships now, seven different gyms, doctors, you know, different agencies, um, even, even got into a Best Western. So, you know, it's been, and all of those guys are mentors to me. They all see my passion, my drive, and for some reason it makes them want to help me. You know, I don't always ask them like, hey, can you give me advice? But more so they, they're attracted to that. They, mm -hmm. These are successful people that are attracted to people who are trying to get there too. And they see that. So I feel like I have a, a, lot, a lot of support from very good people. That's really great. How have your views on leading a team changed after meeting some of these mentors and what you've learned from them? One of the biggest advices I think that I had to kind of transfer from starting with a personable uh, employee kind of, and you know they kind of have told me you know I've got to lead away from hiring friends or family or this or that and that you know that that'll be a struggle sometimes you know they think it's okay to be late or they, they you know just just they get a little more flexible because they're your friend um, so I do see that and um, that that has been something I have had to work on is kind of changing that of like I'm your employer. I'm not your friend, even though I still want to be your friend. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm like, okay. So I'm like, I have to find this fine balance of like, listen, I love you and I care about you, but I also have to like reprimand you if I need to. I have to also, you know, set you straight if we're, you know, if you're doing something multiple times after being told not, you know, then. Um, so there's all of that. That's been, that's been one of the biggest things that I think I'm working on now is really separating the line of like, you know, when we're in here, we're all business mm -hmm. and that's it. 
you know, no outside, no this, no that. We're, we're strict business. If you need to talk to me outside, of course I'll take, I'll talk, you know, but that's been an interesting. It's a hard lesson for a lot of leaders to learn. Yeah. So you're not alone in that. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been it, working with the employees and the staff and getting them to stay or long term. That's been definitely one of the hardest challenges is getting the staff. It's mm -hmm. a problem a lot of a lot of companies are having right now. What was one of the best mistakes you've ever made and what did you learn from it? Hmm. Best mistakes I ever made. That's a hard one. I feel like they're all there. I just can't think of it, but mm. let me try. Well, best mistake. That one, I'm drawing a blank. It's like, I know there's one in there. I just can't right. think of it at the moment. We'll come back to that. Before okay. we're done, you'll probably think of something. Yeah, I'll try. <laughs> right. So maybe this will help. So you're having a lot of success right now. You've been through a huge transformation over the last few years. But what keeps you up at night? What are the, what are the really significant challenges with your company and in your life that you're thinking about? Staff. Staff? Yeah. <laughs> Staff is usually, you know, are they all going to show up in the morning? Do I need to have my backup person on call? You know, sometimes they'll give me little hints, like, in the week, like, oh, like, they'll tell me something weird happened, and I'm like, uh-oh, that might be the sign that they're going to call out on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And so I'll usually kind of go ahead and get someone in line for that. Uh, mostly it's, it's staffing uh, complications that will stress me at nighttime is, you know, is everyone going to show up? If I have like my biggest week come in or a big order week come in, then it's, then I'm going to have that like, okay, everybody needs to show up on time. We can't be behind schedule. We got to get those orders out. I want to be on time for my deliveries. All these things are so important to me where for the staff, you know, they, they push and they try to make those timelines, but it's, it's not the same type of, you know, it's, it's my baby, not theirs. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the things about having a business is no one's ever going to care about it as much as you care about yeah. it. And that's just a reality that every entrepreneur has to come mm -hmm. to grips with. Yeah. And they don't realize like, you know, if they're one hour late or three hours late, how much of an impact that has on the business, how much it sets back the company to uh, get our meals out on time by two o'clock in the afternoon. And it's a big setback if somebody's missing for two or three hours, you know. And you're a little bit of a planner, so I bet that bothers you a little bit. It does. It, it, it's a hard one. Um, I have a good attitude, so I, I do keep, you know, generate when they come through the door, I'm not mean or anything. I'm just like, hey, come on, let's get going. Like, let's get, get on the floor. Let's go. And then from there, it's like we all go into overdrive to get speed us up. But, uh, yeah, that's definitely... I think that's always, that's always the, is everyone going to be on time? Like that sometimes goes on my mind before I go to bed. Is there any other area you feel like you need help with in the business? Uh, I have definitely had to learn to delegate out my jobs because I started off as a one man show and then the company outgrew me and it, it keeps doing that. So I keep putting people in new positions, new jobs, new things, and then it grows more. And then I'm like, uh-oh, now I'm on overdrive. I'm burning myself out again. I've got to hire someone else out now for this job I'm doing. And some, a lot of these are outside jobs. I do all of my design work, all my banners. I designed my logo. I design every billboard, every, every advertisement that you've ever seen. I sit there and I design it for hours on Canva. And so then I, I you know, I, I constantly have to, to remind myself to step back and that I have to have breaks, and I, ha I can't work seven days a week, 24 hours a day, which I can easily do if I don't check myself. Um, so that's been now, I've been starting to hire people outside of the kitchen now to do my outside jobs, such as, like I said, the spreadsheet building, the template for that. Um, I now just hired a social media manager. She's been working the account for a few weeks now, and we've been practicing and connected all my accounts. And she's doing all the things, watching my insights and the days and the things. And she starts talking about it. I'm like, this is a whole other language. I had no idea. And she's like, this is the day you get your traction. This is when we post. And I'm like, you know what? That's you. You've got this. And so she's now working on that side, which is going really well. And we're... Uh, that that's a big job. I work social media a lot. It definitely tires me. It drains me. Yeah, I think that's that's the way it is yeah. for a lot of us. So yeah, I mean, so 
So how do you stay calm? How do you stay centered when you're under stress or feeling a little anxiety? <sighs> One way that I calm, especially after the tornado kitchen days, is I go home and I force myself to lay down. Mm -hmm. Even though I still want to spin and go and go and go, I force myself to lay down in the dark for an hour or two, just lay there. Um, you know, otherwise it, it affects my health. And this last year, you know, I, I was overworking on overdrive too much. And I, you know, had some health scares with the doctor. My, my thyroid crashed and I had to be put on thyroid medication. And my cortisol and adrenals were through the roof, which made it impossible for me to lose weight when I would keep trying. And because my hormones were off. So that was the first thing the doctor was like, you have to cut back somewhere. You have to. You need to lay down. You have to detox. You got to come down from all of this. And, and I was like, okay, okay. They're like, otherwise you're just going to, it's just going to get worse. So for, you know, for the past three months, that has been a blessing in disguise is um, being told that from the doctor and has forced me to take the step back that I needed so I can propel the company, such as even... Now I don't stay all day in the kitchen anymore. I set myself, my staff up and I leave them to cook. I work the whole first round of meals with them on Mondays and I leave at 11. They finish out till two, they load the cars, they go. These little things have kind of made a big difference and now my health is back to taking those moves. So I see now too how overworking and trying to do it all by myself is is detrimental to my health and my mentality and I'm trying to help other people and I can't do that if I'm not functioning properly. I think that's great advice because especially in the entrepreneur world and I know I find myself doing this as well is when the stress starts to hit the answer is the answer we come up with is often I got to do more I got to mm -hmm. find a way to do more and I think your advice is great for entrepreneurs or leaders who are in high stress environments or have a lot of plates spinning, a lot of things going on, is to take a minute, to take you know 20 minutes, an hour, whatever, whatever you need, mm -hmm. and to get just to try to clear your mind a little bit. I think yeah. it's fantastic advice because for entrepreneurs especially, it's, it's yeah. often the opposite is the solution we land yeah. on. And I lay there until my head stops spinning. Sometimes it's 30 minutes, sometimes it's three hours. And I will just spin and spin and spin from the day. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing I do is I go to the gym. That's my other stress relief. I kind of had a feeling <laughs> that was in your, in yeah. your quiver. Yeah, so of that's another one. I, I do go to the gym. I stretch. I do my cardio. I do my lift my weightlifting. And then I do yoga sometimes, too, if I'm really having a day and I need to hear the sounds and the mm -hmm. darkness and the whole thing. Like, sometimes I need the extra. So I kind of just... I just do those, there, I have a few of those me things and I make sure that I do them because when I stop doing them, then I don't become happy and then my goals start to fall down and then, like I said, I, I can't help anyone when I'm not being my best self, so I have to remember to love me first and that's hard because I love everyone else so much that I will toss me to the side mm -hmm. and so I've learned that, like I said, a couple times now in this business that I have to remember that I have to be up on the top of the list too. And that, that's been definitely eye-opening for my health and then also to lead by example. That's great advice. So what is coming up for Real Prep Meal Prep and for Sarah? What, what are you excited about that's coming up? So we have a couple events coming up. We love to do events. So that's what I do sometimes to propel the business, especially if I have a slowdown in growth. I'll put myself out there. I'll go do the farmer's market. I know you do. Yeah. So, and, you know, it might not be my favorite thing to do, but it helps grow the sales. It helps make connections. It helps me reconnect with the normal people walking around that are looking for this that don't know they're looking for it or they see it and they're like, oh, wow, you know, they get inspired just by walking by. Um, that's been, I'm always seeking events or opportunity. So I've do, done events at the doctor's offices now. I've done them at Drip Bar. I've done them at Torture Gym, Grand Opening, Elevation. You know, I go to all the Grand Openings. I go to any gyms that want to bring it to their members. I give their members, you know, a code for they can, if they're a member of that, it's a perk for the gym now that they have a meal prep company. And those are, um, we. oh, then I do shows too. So coming up, we're about to do, um, a best damn CrossFit. Um, they do a competition every year, and we this will be our third year doing it. 
and we go to it and we put up the big tent because it's an outdoor event and all the competitors they're throwing all their cross weights and then we're giving the samples and then when they're done eating they come over like monsters and I'm like I got my microwave don't worry and I'm microwaving meals for all these guys and so they won't eat until towards the end I've learned now doing it twice in a row so, but I come now with that chest ready because when they're done they're coming for the meals and uh, we do that those are fun and then I have a snap fitness one coming up as well and I have Steve Carr coming up which is another big bodybuilding show and I have the Samson show and Cutler they are all coming up boom 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 real shortly here all right well we'll get we'll get stuff linked up so people can find out where they can come and see you mm -hmm. if they uh, if they want to see yeah. you and taste some of what you what you've cooked so yeah all right, I have a couple more questions for you, but I'd like to take care of the, the administrative stuff before we get into the last couple of questions. So is there anything else we should know about Sarah Ramthan and real prep meal prep? Mm, I think you covered most of the most of the things, I think. We covered a lot, so. Yeah, I don't think, I, I don't feel like I have anything inside me that I was wishing you met. Okay. <laughs> well, I always want to give you a chance. So where can everyone find Real Prep Meal Prep? Where can they find you? So the, the location that we're at is on Cheyenne, uh, 1030 Cheyenne. And we're centered behind the reef business in front of us. They're on the back side. Then um, generally, I'm online. So through my Instagram, Real Prep Meal Prep, or Facebook, Real Prep Meal Prep is how many new customers will contact me. Uh, my number, every, every way to contact me is on my website as well, realprepmealprep.net. And we, most of the times people call. Honestly, I think I get more phone calls than I do emails, which I prefer anyways. Usually if I get an email, I return it with a call. Because mm -hmm. I like to give the person ability. I like to show someone that my company cares for them. I, you know, they'll write me, I have this and I have that. And I'm like, this is a phone call. I'm not going to write yeah. this person back. There's no way. And it, it so I just like, call them. It sounds like something needs a little personal touch to make sure you're yeah. really serving them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like to talk to them. I like to hear their stories. And I love when they call me back, too, in a week or two. And they're like, oh, my gosh, I'm dropping weight now. And they couldn't lose weight before. And, you know, all of the things. It's, it's very personable and... I think the phone calls, I, I always take the phone calls. Like, those are my favorite. That's great. What is someone, who is someone, or what is something you're grateful for? Definitely my son. My son, he, he's my biggest inspiration. He changed my life, and he saved my life, and I have a commitment and promise that I made to him. And that is, uh, behind that is my own personal background and his experiences and my experiences that had led me into changing my life and turning it around and wanting to help other people instead of being destructive. Because I, before these years and my son, I lived in a more destructive life and I was an angry child with my adoption. So my biggest inspiration is my son and changing the patterns that I grew up in as a child and the things that I went through and making sure that I make some of those things right in my heart for him. Um, so I would say Drayden is my biggest motivation. I can tell that when, when we look at your Instagram, we can see how much, how big a part of your life he is and how big a part of his life you yeah. are and how much fun you guys are having together. And you've even got him helping out with the business. And mm -hmm. he, he just always seems so excited to, to be involved with what yeah. you're doing. So, Yeah, he's, he's definitely like my mini-me. We do everything. We, he, we work out together. Like I said, we did the swimming, the cycling. If he does a sport, I join it. I don't, I don't even always know what I'm doing, but, mm. but I try. And he loves it. And I coach him. Even if I don't really know, I'll read the rules of the sport and I'll teach him the stuff that he needs to know. And, um, yes, he, I did bring him into the business this summer. He turned 13 years old. And the Southern Nevada Health District allows you to work your immediate family at the age of 13 in the kitchen. And... Although he's not allowed to touch the ovens, but he can do the prep work. He comes, so for the summer, he worked the Sunday and Mondays, and he would come in and he would peel potatoes is the first job I started teaching him. 
Then I bought him these cutting gloves that have metal in them so you can't cut through the glove. Mm -hmm. Then I started teaching him how to chop the potatoes. And I got the gloves so if his knife slips, it's not going to go right through his hand. And so we made it very safe for him to learn how to chop hard potatoes that for his little size, he mm. could be put in his whole body. <laughs> He's like, yeah. mom, I can't get it through, you know? And I'm like, okay. Like, so, and then I've taught him how to kind of put the oomph in there. Mm -hmm. And now he's cutting all his potatoes. But these yams that we're working with, some of them are, they're big and they're hard. And so from there, he, um, then he learned how to do the rice. So he starts the jasmine rice, the brown rice. He knows how to pour it on the pans now safely. And he, one of his favorite things, and I think it is part of, um, I'm a very intricate person and I get very dialed in if I'm focused on something. Like if when I'm, even when if I'm cutting an onion, it's like very, um, what was the word? The very, oh, I can't think of the word right now, but it's very, oh, it's right there. So when I, it's peaceful, like it's, I feel very like in the zone. So I noticed that with him too, he likes to trim the sirloin. I don't know why, but he has, he gets joy out of getting all the fat off mm -hmm. and then cutting it into perfect cubes. And so every time we come in, he's like, mom, can I please chop the sirloin? So he gets his potatoes. He, so now it makes him faster at that. Cause I'm like, well, you have to get to it before Edgar gets to it. So now he races to gets the potatoes. Da, 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 da. So now he's like the super efficient worker. He's super cool to watch on the floor. Cause he's everywhere. And he's like just this little mini beast on the floor and he chops the sirloin. And then, and then on Mondays I started bringing him in. He was already familiar with weighing food on scales because I've been doing that for years for mm -hmm. myself. So, and he used to help me when he was little too. He would sit there and weigh my meats with me and we would do it together. And we would, you know, we started making him mini meals and whatnot. And um, that's how, so when I put him in the company, he was weighing the meats with us. He was, you know, mixing the vegetables and he was preparing the meals too. And I didn't expect it to go that far, but he was really loving it all summer. And I, I saw a whole change in his personality, his manners, his motivation, his his confidence in himself really changed this summer. And I really think it was work involved. It's amazing what a little uh, a little success and a little a little accomplishment can do. Yeah. To to turn the amount of responsibility that I can see he now he's more like I got this, you yeah. know, versus kind of like quiet and shy. He's more confident. Excellent. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to future leaders, especially young women who are starting or thinking about starting a business? My advice to give to anybody is if you have a passion inside of you that you know is something you want to do and pursue and you don't care what it takes to get there is to do it. Even if you don't have the money, you start small, you start mini, you start at home. You know, you, 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 don't have, you don't have to have the full plan in place. You have to have the footsteps in place, one step after another. So I think my biggest advice would be if you have a passion and a niche for something that you really want to do, do it. And don't be afraid. And then every time there's an opportunity, you jump on it. It's scary, you know. Um, I take risks all the time. I don't always know if it's gonna work. I invest in things, it may or may not come back, but I, I think somewhere in the big picture it comes back. But you know, that's, that's the biggest thing is um, the opportunity. Seek opportunity, it does not come to you. It, it, it may sometimes, you know, someone might notice you and pick you up and come and say, you know, we wanna do this or do that or highlight your company. Okay, you know, I've had a couple of instances like that, but a lot of them I have seek myself. I have pursued those relationships. I, I reached out to Iris Kyle. I walked up to her at the show and said, please let me feed you. I promise you I know what I'm doing. And she's looking at me, uh, let me prove it to you. So she did. She said, okay, all right. Like, you know, she asked me all the questions. I told her I could do it and I did it. And now I've been feeding her going on two years. Um, and her clients at her gym. You know, same thing with all of those guys. I've had to prove myself to them. So when you believe so strongly in something, you, even if you're afraid to walk up and tell someone, you still just do it. I, even if you're shaking, even if you're crying inside because you're panicking, like just do it. And that's, that has been the biggest growth for me through this company is being brave. You know, even on the way to this talk, I was in the car. I had to self talk to myself. I had to prepare myself emotionally. Uh, you know, it's scary. And 
it's there's a lot of facing your fears when it comes to believing in your product and chasing it. Well, you've been fabulous today. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I, I, I knew you were nervous about this because we talked, but mm -hmm. I would never know you were nervous about this watching you on camera here today. And I hope we get to see more of you on camera and, and have you do more speaking. But I want to thank you for being here today. This has been wonderful. So much, so much insight yes. for us. So, thank you for having me. I also want to thank Litigation Discovery Group for allowing us to use part of their space as our studio today. And thank all of you for watching The Leader's Mindset. Whatever you're going to go do today, make sure you have an impact.